Hello. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Yanni, for the time. This is a, a great opportunity for us, for, for me, for, for to show what the team is doing. Um, so I will just head into that right now. So unlocking the potential of Kaikuyu password-based systems through remote management. So as Yanni mentioned, uh, so there is, a, there is a huge potential in password production uh, in the new software's data systems. But as the research is showing, uh, all that research, uh, all that the research is showing that all that um, potential is diluted, um, given different causes, um, mainly for management, and uh, and also what we have is like fluctuating scenarios, given the weather changing from one year to another. I just I have a year and a half here in Australia, and the conditions changed dramatically, and they are still changing. Uh, so then the angle is, so we know that password management is key for, uh, in, in order for daily grazing systems to thrive, and to manage the, these password systems, we need information. The management tools that we have for monitoring pastures, so we know the traditional ones, which is the plate meter, visual assessment, we can use the CDAX, but all those tools are really good, reliable, but they are uh, time consuming. As we know, all farmers are really busy and, uh, and, and, and then down the track, this is not you, uh, fully implemented on farms. Uh, so our angle is just to use uh, the new area in decision making, which is the uh, decision support tools based on machine learning, artificial intelligence. And what we are doing is the angle is where we are do, using is uh, remote sensing. So sentinel images, satellite images, just uh, processed in the machine learning process in order to give us um, pasture biomass. So what we're trying to do is just to improve the production and the productivity and pasteurization of these systems using uh, remote sensing, these decision support tools. So what we have is uh, Given all the, the efforts for the for the organization from, from the ADAP, this is a unique position for research, and it's great just to be here working uh, under these conditions. So we have three excellent uh, technical officers distributed across New South Wales. They are in the north, in the mid coast, and the south coast. But also, and importantly, we have the farmers. So we are doing research on farms, and this is unique. This is uh, this is great. So having these farms just opening gates for us just to do our, res our research and is uh, really, really unique. So those, those farms ha uh, are sharing a unique characteristic, which is they are pasture-based, of course. They are uh, on, on ryegrass uh, from, from autumn to spring, and then kaikuyo and summer. And, and the initial analysis from this project, which started in November 2021, officially for the data collection. Uh, so we have the technical officers just like visiting those farms on a weekly basis, just passing the plate meter, doing the farm work, having conversations with the farmer. And at the same time, we are collecting sentinel images. Because we know that uh, in, the, in the industry, there are really good tools available for the farmers. We decided to use Pasture.io, which is a decision support tool, artificial intelligence, by, uh, based on machine learning, which is uh, ruminating, condensing information from different sources, weather, soil, farmer, and all, all that information is converted into biomass. So we are comparing what we are seeing from the ground with the sentinel images. The aim is just to get the farmers try to use or at least, at least listen to these tools so to see if they can tweak the pasture management using this technology. Um, because we try to give extra service to the farmers, we are collecting pasture samples on pre-grazings just to get pasture quality, and then we just uh, write reports to the farmers on a monthly basis so we can, so we can add a bit more while we're doing the research. So these are the results for year one. So what we got is when comparing the plate meters, so the ground, the ground data using the plate meters, calibrated plate meters, 
with our own equations. This is what we got, and we just jump out of our chairs just to see this. And this confirmed a few things that the industry is already seeing. So some farmers are reluctant to use satellites because they, they feel that they are not fully accurate and needs, and, and needs improvement. So what we saw is this. We saw an, a high error, at least 800 kilograms of dry matter per hectare, which is a limitation for the, for the tool. But also we acknowledge that we have our own error in our, play, in, in our plate meter. But then we still got good perception from farmers because the tool is really good and it's really hands-on and can be implemented, can be used by the farmers. So what we've done, we just come up with an idea since we are collecting the information on a weekly basis, on the five paddocks, throughout the year, we, are merging, we merge all the data, the ground data with the satellite data, and we calibrated this, this tool. This artificial intelligence, we know that is really data hunger, so needs data needs to be trained. So what we got is, I'm not gonna go into the details for this, for this, um, for this training, but we can discuss later on if you want. But what we got is that we just set our research questions just to see what is the minimum data that we need to use to train these models in order to work on an error comparable to plate meter, which is the standard for us. So we got this information. So we just need to enter the information on five paddocks on a fortnightly basis, which takes no longer than one hour each visit, so two hours per month, which can be a lot and it's really sophisticated and it's a bit complex, but it's there. So this is, this is the way we got out just to, just to keep on using this tool. So that's year one for us. But then that puts us in a, in a, in a really good situation because now we are in year two. We have the 15 farms, the 700 paddocks that we are monitoring, 300 hectares, plenty of records, so we can analyze all the data just looking backwards and see where it get us, gets us just looking to the future. So I'm gonna put a few examples here just using the data. So what we are seeing on farms, just, just trying to um, put a few ideas on how we can unlock the potential of pasture production or where we can improve our systems just using this tool. So example one, so what we get here, this is a random farm, and I'm, I'm not putting names. So if you see the green bars on, 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 the, first, on, on the first plot, is a single farm, and pasture production goes from 13 tons to five tons. Then the small number that you get on top of each bar is the grazings. So all this information was really hard it's really hard to get on a, on, a, on a regular farm if you're not measuring the data, if you're not crunching the numbers, and if you're not putting that to air. But because we have the satellites trained, we have this information, and we can use it. And then we can start asking questions. So why is changing? Why, why, why do I get more production from one product to another? Is that uh, on purpose? Was that an, an effect that we got from the season? How many grazing we're getting per product? Fertilization, seasonal pro production? Let, let's go to the other example. So the one in, uh, on the bottom, on the left-hand side, is a similar farm, just continuous paddocks. If you have a look, what we get is the pasture production distributed on the, uh, on the year. And the distribution from one paddock to another is quite different. Perhaps that is on purpose, perhaps not. But since we have this information, we can use it. The next example, that these are two farms that are together really different pasture distributed throughout the year. Can be uh, on purpose or not, but then if we have this information, we can start thinking forward. We can just say, okay, I can create a feed budget just using what I have, or I can tweak what I have, what, what I'm, how I am producing in order to get a good plan on hand. Another example. So here, this is what we, how we see a, a, a paddock throughout a year from space. What I am representing here in the green line is the pasture biomass. All the drops are grazings, and the upper and lower peaks are the pre-grazings and post-grazings. So I mentioned that we have 700 paddocks that are grazed at least eight times a year, so I have more than 5,000 records 
of grazings. So that is really powerful for us, for our research, it's really good. But then we can just like apply all this analysis to particular cases. Here I'm just arranging the data according to the regions. So we get the North region, mid, um, the North Coast region, Mid Coast region, and South Coast, and uh, throughout the year. Autumn, winter, spring, and summer, and this is the pre-grazings and the post-grazings. So I'm, I'm just gonna set a few targets, just, like to, just to give an idea on when we should be grazing those paddocks, and also about the residuals. So the pre-grazing covers, what we get from this one, is that they look good, the pre-grazing, they're on, on time, so we are in synchrony when we are hitting those paddocks, but then what about the residuals? The residuals are really high. Let me put it differently. So if we arrange all the pre-grazings in too early, target met, or too late, and now I'm just putting numbers, just putting figures, and I'm distributing uh, all the records again, just in, in the regions and throughout the years. So we see, for example, that in the North Coast, they are grazing those paddocks. Most of those paddocks are grazed too early, which, can, which perhaps is not too bad, but we are losing a bit of production there. So and th those are giving us ideas on where are the hidden losses for those paddocks. And then, too late. If you see that too late is also happening, and mostly in the mid coast and the south coast, we're getting that in spring and summer. Now we think this in terms of uh, ryegrass or kaikuyu, that can have an impact on the grazing efficiency and pasture utilization. What about the post grazings? This is undeniable that we are, this is linked to the previous slide. So almost all paddock were undergrazed. And here, by, by saying this, I'm losing a lot of, a lot of pasture. We're leaving a lot of pasture behind, and this is masked, or we are masking here all the supplement substitution, and there is a lot of money, just to, a lot of grass to be converted into milk there. So an average of almost five tons of dry matter per hectare per year, and that's a lot. Another example, so two contrasting grazings, two paddocks, on the bars, each bar is showing each grazing. So on the green, on the green line, we get the pre-grazing, and on the orange one is the post-grazing. Then the horizontal uh, lines are like the target pre-grazing and post-grazing. For this particular paddock, it was grazed 13 times. It grew 11 tons of grass, and only six tons of grass were converted, uh, were grazed. So based on grace disappearance. So pre-grazing minus post-grazing, the, the, the grace, the, the pasture was just eaten. And here we have a really contrasting scenario. We all can see the differences here. This, this other paddock was grazed 18 times. He grew, this farmer grew 15 tons of, of dry matter per hectare, nine grazings, and the grazing use efficiency was 73%. What we can see from these two, from these two situations is that, that, that the pre-grazings are in time, and because of that, there, there are more chances just, just to hit those residuals. And here, what I'm, what I'm showing is each single dot is a single paddock, and these are almost all the grazings that we have for the, for the year one. On the x-axis, we get the pre-grazing covers, and on the y-axis, we get the post-grazing covers. And in essence, what this is telling us is when we are hitting the, pasture, the, the pastures below the three tons of grasses, there are more chances just to hit those post grazings in time. And the, beyond the three tons of grass that we get for the pasture quality, pastures are dropping half point of megajoules of metabolizable energy per 100 kilograms of grass. If we are feeding a cow 15, a kilograms of grass on a single day on a 3,200 pre-grazing pasture compared to, the, to a 27, that can represent at least nine liters of milk. That is only considering milk. And that is, and this is just using our Sentinel data, our satellite data. And I'm just gonna, and I'm just gonna finish on, on, on the project for the journey, P1A journey so far. 
uh, since we are here at the University of Sydney, I had the pleasure to have a, a good discussion with Luis Tedeschi. Luis Tedeschi is a, is an, is an, is a, is a, a modeler from, from Texas, uh, really famous and renowned. Uh, he, we had this, this discussion on, because he's also working on machine learning, artificial intelligence, but for the animal science, and he presented some results uh, on a seminar a few months back, and he shared me this slide. And this, is, this, uh, and, and this is just explaining what we are doing with the resources. So we are using the artificial intelligence just to collect the data, because it's big data, it's a lot of information. We are putting all of that together. We are generating information, and that information then, with our agronomy, with our knowledge on biology, we will be using that with farmers. So now our position is just to work with farmers in the year two, we are not visiting the farm on, on, on a weekly basis. We are going every fortnight because we are calibrating the satellites and they're working better for us. What we are doing is just like working with farmers, just using this remote sensing tool in order to uh, improve pasture management. So what we, what we got so far from, from, the, from, our, um, from our research so far is that the, uh, the, the, the potential for pasture production in New South Wales is confirmed, and we are seeing that. We are, we are seeing really high pasture production on, uh, across, across regions, and, the, and we are also seeing where the hidden losses are detected with this uh, decision support tool. This uh, remote monitoring of pastures can, be, uh, can happen, but needs training. For this, the role, we also acknowledge that the role of the technical officer is crucial because we have all the resources deployed on, on farms, so we have our plate meter calibrated, we are using that, we are using with the technical officers. Uh, and I am also personally doing that here at the Coast of Indeity. I mean, it's really nice, really encouraging to do, to do that, and then to just to, to, to fill up the, um, the, the discussion with farmers. And as a final message from the pasture side is that using this tool, so if we take care of the pre-grazing, so if we have a synchrony in the pre-grazing, there are more chances just to hit, to hit those residuals in time. And that means more milk, more pasture utilized and produced. Eric, we have time for a couple of quick questions for Martin. Well, everyone, is someone, ah, yes, Neil, please. Um, can, can, yeah, you don't need. Ben, I think, um, what's happened in the fall when I can't? What's happening when the British can only cross tap and do this in certain parts of the ground, and then they take around Well, exactly. Well, that, that means that that paddock needs to be, so you just need to do a tidy up on the paddock, which just need to be mulched, or, uh, I mean, it's waste, and that is, reducing pasture persistency, is dropping the pasture growth, is dropping pasture production. So it is, it is, it is the other direction where we want to go. And are we seeing more of that at Fort Wayne Ice kind of simulated being quite huge, I suppose, or being wider? No, this is, this, this, is, this is year round. This is year round because we are also seeing that those residuals are also really high in winter. And, uh, and I also need to just, we just need to clarify that last year, it was a really particular year. I mean, I've been hearing this since I got here, but we got flood, flood of flooded, and then and that is and that is in winter. But then if you go to summer, really hot. So it's not not an easy task just to get to get it right. But having all this information, using all these tools, is giving us better chances just to just, just to to have a plan in place. Any other question? I think it's great, Martin, to, to start to finally start seeing or quantifying losses in pasture utilization because it, until now it's kind of a, everyone knows, but it's different story when you actually can put the numbers. So yeah. I have a good, great expectations on that work. Well done. And my question would be: say, how do you see this playing? I mean, at the moment, neither of the software we're using actually can handle that. You are doing that additional to the work, what is the, what is the next step? Exactly, exactly, so what, what, so all, almost all what we are seeing here 
you cannot access to that in Pasturaio, <laughs> but our aim is just to work with them. Since we have the agronomy, we have the data, work with them just collaboratively, just in, in, in order to give them this advice on how we can develop these tools because this information needs to, needs to be delivered to the farmers. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, Martin.